Game Devs I know it's been a while since I made a video, but that's a topic for a different video. Anyway, it's great to be back, so let's just jump straight in. In this video, I would like to show how I set up player movement, idle, walk and run based on the input strength of a controller, mainly the left joystick. Ok, let's get moving, but first, a big thanks to Valerio Pelling 826 for the great question that gave me the idea for this video. If you have a question or a suggestion, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And maybe my next video will be based on your great question or suggestion. I will be using Godot 4.3 in this video. In this first example, I have a simple scene setup. I used a node 2 d node to pull the level as the root node, a tile map layer node for the ground and the character body 2D node for the player. I set up an animated sprite 2D node for the player's sprite and a collision shape 2D node for the player to detect collisions with the ground as a child of the character body 2D node. I also set up idle, walk and run animations for the player and attached a script to the player by selecting the character body 2D node and clicking the attach script button. Now let's take a look at the script. Our script extends the character body 2D class. We can see this by holding the control key and clicking character body 2D on the script. This will bring up the documentation for the class right here in the editor. Next, we will need to set up some variables. We will set up variables for walk speed, run speed, and gravity. And we can get a reference to the animated sprite 2D. We will need this later to set up the animations. And the last variable we will need is a dead zone for the controller. We can set it to a small value like 0.1. In the physics process delta function, we check if the player is not on the floor and apply gravity to it. Then set up a variable for input strength equal to input.getAxis and set the input for move left and move right. Ok, now let's take a look at setting up the inputs for the controller. We go to project, project settings and input map. You can see that I have already set up the inputs. But let's delete the move right and set it up again. Now we can set up the dead zone logic and determine if the player is walking or running. To set up the dead zone, we check if the absolute value of the input strength is less than the dead zone value and set the input strength equal to zero. The absolute value simply returns a positive value for the input, which will be negative when the player is moving to the left. To determine if the player is walking or running, we check if the input strength is not equal to zero. Then, we will use linear interpolation to smoothly move between walking and running. Set a variable speed equal to loop, which takes three values. A min value, the walk speed, a max value, the run speed, and a value over which the change takes place which will be the absolute value of the input strength. Then we set the player's x velocity equal to the speed multiplied by the input strength because we will need the value to be negative if the player is moving to the right. Then we use an else statement to set the x velocity of the player equal to zero when there is no input. 
we can also use if and else if statements to handle playing the correct animations for walk and run, depending on the player's X velocity, and play the idle animation if the player's X velocity is equal to zero, and not forgetting to use the built-in function move and slide to apply the movement. Now, when we play the game, we can see that if we push the left stick slightly, the player walks, and if we push it all the way, the player runs. And also the correct animations play. If you did not quite get it the first time, please use the timestamps to go back in the video. And feel free to pause the video to look at the code. When you're ready, let's move on. Now that you understand the basic concept of setting up the input, let's look at another application for top-down movement. I have set up another level with a player in the same way as I did before. The only difference is in the code, which now handles top-down movement. Let's take a look. Since we are going to be using top-down movement, we will not need a variable for gravity. And for simplicity, we'll not be setting up any animations. I think that it would be much easier to explain if we look at both scripts side by side. Both scripts use the same variables for walk speed, run speed, and dead zone. The difference is when we set the variables for input strength. We will need to check for the input on both the X and Y axes. For simplicity, I've used the default input set up in Godot. However, it is recommended that custom input be set up as I did earlier in the video. We will also need to apply the dead zones to both the X and Y axes. Then we determine if the player is walking or running using an input vector. We can set a variable input magnitude equal to the length of a vector 2 of the input strength of both the X and Y. We use an if function to check if the magnitude is greater than zero and use the lerp function as we did before, but this time passing in the input magnitude. Then we apply the movement in both axes. We use an else function to check if there's no input and we do not apply the movement by setting the velocity equal to vector 2.0, which is basically zero on the X and zero on the Y. And we remember to call the built-in function move and slide to apply the movement. When we play the game, we have top-down movement where the walk speed and run speed is controlled by how far we push the left joystick in any direction. Thanks for watching. We looked at a lot today. I hope this video was helpful. If you liked the video, give it a like. It really helps out. And subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when I upload another video. This has been Diragu Games.